Hello everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. Today's shoe ramble is going to bring you a pair of shoes from Transylvania. We're not talking about vampires or Dracula, we're talking about Passus shoes. And specifically, their V-front two eyelet derby named the Tom. So I wanted to use this time to talk a little bit about Passus Shoes as a brand, and then of course we're gonna focus more on this particular makeup, which is probably their most well-regarded and well-known style. Just to recap, Passus makes hand-welted shoes with machine-stitched uppers, hand-welting along the front 180 degrees of the shoe, and a wood-pegged waist, which you will see here. Passus has become known for their beautiful sole work and their innovative styles and well-priced offerings given the segment in which they exist. So let's talk a little bit about Passus and then we'll talk a little bit more about this shoe. So Passus was started in 2019 by a couple of individuals, including Rezo Kudi, who is the idea man behind the brand, originated from Vash Shoes as one of their primary sales managers for many years, kind of built up the brand of Vash, and then ultimately transitioned to other brands such as Heinrich Dinkelacher before deciding that he wanted to put together a brand that elevated um, his ideas to a near bespoke level of fit and finish. And so Passus Shoes was born, it comes from a heritage of shoes that includes Vash, as I mentioned. These shoes are very similarly styled to St. Crispin's as well as Zonky Boot, um, but they also form a heritage of Eastern European footwear that includes Heinrich Dinkelacher and others that occupy various price points in this segment. Um, Passus, basically, is a much more elegant and evolved shoe than, say, what you would get from Vash. Um, although Vash is a very very good offering at the price that um, you can find those particular shoes at, particularly when they're on sale. So I will say that this particular model, as I mentioned, is their um, most famous model, the Tom, which features a elegant, somewhat elongated, um, slightly almond shaped last. You can see the shape along the edge here. This is a V-front derby, meaning that it has an open channel lacing system that you can see here. This is an open flap here. Um, the V front refers to the shape of this particular facing, it has a V-like look to it. You have a two eyelet derby here. Um, and please excuse my lacing, that was not the best job. You can see some of the contrast work done to separate the lining from the outer leather and it creates almost like a piping effect here as well as on the top of the shoe, which I think is really beautiful. This uses a beautiful reverse suede, tight napped uh, um, leather, which I think is really, really elegant and well done. This is a reverse suede, meaning that uh, it's the full hide, just not a split suede, which um, are often used to save on costs. As I mentioned, there is a beautiful machine stitch contrast stitching on the upper that you can see right here. The hand welted um, outsole stitching through 180 degrees is done very cleanly with a somewhat aggressive, but I think appropriate fudging detail done. You know, this is a more casual um, shoe, although it can be worn semi-formally. And with more casual shoes, having a more hard or distinct fudge which you can see as the ridges along this right there um, is appropriate for the style. You see that the shoe transitions to a blind waist, which is possible because the welting stops at 100 degree, 180 degrees and is replaced by the pegging there done in two rows on both sides of the sole. You see that the edge of the sole has a gentle bevel to it, which I think is really well done. And that obviously, the waist of the shoe transitions to a fiddleback, which you can see right in this area here. Now I've used sole guards to protect the shoe from typical wear and tear, but you can see the beautiful work done on the sole. Obviously there's a pegging that we referred to, but also this really lovely nailing done here, as well as some very elegant nailing done on the heel block that you can see here, 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 and then here and here. Very well done. These are JR leather soles, so quite, 
high quality soles that are designed to last for quite a while. Um, you see a squared off heel block here, so you do lose some of the detailing you might see in a more elevated shoe, such as a tapered heel or a more form fit block. But this is still very cleanly done with regards to the upper here. So I think that this is um, appropriate for the style. While we're here, I'm gonna show you the other major feature of this shoe, something that I've grown to become um, really um, excited about when I see a makeup, and that's this seamless heel. So meaning that many dress shoes have a seam down the backside of the heel to provide more leather panels, which makes the shoe easier to put together, assemble, and then ultimately last. This shoe is really made from two pieces of leather. One that forms the forefoot of the shoe as well as the vamp, and then a second panel that basically forms the back, the, the back and the side panels here, all as two simple pieces of leather. So really a unique, very clean design that elevates this to what you would expect from a more bespoke or upper end shoe. Passes shoes tend to price out around $800 to $900 US currently based off of the market segment and value. You can compare that to something like St. Crispin's, which will offer shoes at the $1,400 to $1,700 price point. Some of that will come down to like, do you like the shape of the last? Do you like the shape of the shoe? Do you like the style? I would say that Passus has a more curated, smaller run of different styles, but if you happen to like their style and the makeup, you get a ready to wear shoe built on a really comfortable, stylish, somewhat elongated last with some of those bespoke features like the seamless heel, the reverse suede upper, the clean stitch detail on the upper even though it's done by machine, the hand welting along the outsoles, the wood peg waist which you might see in a St. Crispin or a few other brands, and just the, you know, everything comes together really nicely in terms of the details, but at the end of the day, it's the synthesis of those details that makes the shoe. And I think that that's where Passus is particularly successful. Rezo Kudi and the other founders have decided to make a smaller repertoire of shoes and focus on the fit and finish of that style rather than to try to have a broad catalog of styles. And I think they've done a really good job of selecting a bunch of different options that will be appealing, easily approachable, and broadly applicable in terms of styles that are able to be used in a wider range of outfits. So Passus, their Tom shoe. In terms of fit and finish, you might want to check with Passus about the fit of these shoes. I got this on the used market and I actually had to add a little insole to provide a little bit better fit because I was told that this particular style ran a bit tight and narrow and to size up a half from your typical. So this is a size UK 9.5. I'm usually a UK 9. Although I think I could have easily gone to a UK 9 and I heard after the fact that Passus actually changed some of their sizing parameters somewhere along the way. So if that's the case or not, I'm not sure. It's sort of what I've heard. But at the end of the day, the Tom is a really elegant option for you if you're deciding to consider a shoe in the upper hundreds price point, 700, 800, 900 dollars with really high quality fit and finish at the level of something like St. Crispin's, but at a slightly lower price point. I take just as much pride and enjoyment in owning this as I do my other pair from St. Crispin's. So I think that you can't go wrong with passes if you like the style. So keep them in mind. I hope you enjoyed this shoe ramble. Um, leave a comment, subscribe and like. Those things all help the YouTube algorithm send this out to more people who will then see it. So um, all in all, I think this is um, something that I hope that you do. And I hope that you like the shoes and I hope you love these rambles. And I hope to see you at the next video. Take care, bye.